Rides for Seven Brothers, released in 1954, is touted as one of the most successful movie musicals of all time for a couple of reasons. Number one, it was actually written for the big screen, unlike many of its contemporaries, which were adaptations of screenplays. Also, it was made using CinemaScope, which had only been introduced in 1953, the year prior. So the visuals were very stunning for the time. The choreography done by Michael Kidd was extremely acrobatic, and the music by Johnny Mercer and Gene DePaul created several timeless classics. Perhaps the best part was the cast, which included heavy hitters from the screen and Broadway, including Jane Powell, Howard Keel, and Julie Newmar. This movie is definitely considered a classic, but does it really deserve this designation? Well, this is The Right Perspective, the podcast that reviews TV shows and films that are considered classics by the world or by one of us, and then we decide whether it actually deserves that designation. Today, we are going to discuss Seven Brides for Seven Brothers and then decide whether it gets one, two, or three wagon wheels. <laughs> Can we settle on wagon wheels or is it? Listen. The wagon wheels is it. Okay, great. Wagon is great, it. great. Okay, so let's get into it. Kick us off, bro. All right. Well, um, I'm not in the interest of this being natural. I may be having an internet connection situation. So. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany, Brittany just professionally messaged me and said that it froze again. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, I'm ready. Okay, hi, I'm Aubrey. I'm the oldest. I'm Janaya. I'm the middle. <laughs> and I am Brittany. I am the youngest. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to tell y'all, listen, when we first conceptualized this podcast, we knew we wanted to look at Seven Brides for Seven Brothers and really talk about it because, and we'll get into it later. But this movie truly has been a part of our lives for as long as we can remember because it is one of our oh, mother's favorite yes. friggin' <laughs> movies of all time. <laughs> she loves it. She loves it. We watched it she all the time growing up. And so uh, why don't we keep our normal format? We can kick off with, um, you know, like a summary just for someone who hasn't seen it yet to kind of give them the overview. Bro, are you going to do the summary this time? Yes, and, uh, <laughs> and I will say that obviously any of us could summarize this movie. Clearly, clearly, so and quickly. Being, being, you know, just for the fact that we've seen this movie no less than twenty-five four, bajillion four, times, four, four, five. <laughs> Four or five million times, something like that. Yes. And he, even, <laughs> even as adults, when we said we'd never watch it again, we've watched it on our own time. Yeah. I think I, I'll watch Seven no, Brothers. I, I, I never said I would never watch it again. I've, I never said that. Oh, okay. I, 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 love, I love Seven Brothers and Seven Brothers. <laughs> And it looks like it's gonna get your wagon wheel. <laughs> I love Seven Brothers. Spoiler. All right. So I'll tell you off the top, but um. But what's more important is why I love it. Uh, which, uh -huh. which, 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 we'll into, which we'll get into. But uh, okay, so Seven Brides for Seven Brothers takes place in oh man, you Oregon, know Oregon territory. I know, no, no, I know, I know, I know, I know that. I know that. I know mm -hmm. that. What, what was the name of the the book? The book that the whole concept came wasn't from? it Sobbing Women. Yeah, it was Sovereign Women. I, I just want to make sure, because when I'm about to get deep into this explanation, and uh -oh. I don't want to be, I don't want to be interrupted by Listen. not knowing. <laughs> Take uh -oh. us there. Take us this, there. We're going to the yeah. inside. While you're this, researching, I got you. No, 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 no. Okay, yeah, it is. <laughs> no, it is. It is Sovereign Women. That is the. The book it was based on, or that inspired yeah. it. The, wow, now I never knew this. Uh, everybody out there in podcast land. Yeah, podcast land is that <laughs> the book Sabin Women was based on a, the rape of the Sabine women. Man. It's a Roman mythology, a Roman myth. Yeah. It's about, yeah. So, anyway, all right. Mm -hmm. So, but, I, but the book she had, it, it was a short story. 
um, um, by Stephen Benet. Okay, all right, that's all I needed. Okay, all right, so Seven Brides for Seven Brothers takes place in uh, 1850 in Oregon. And um, the first thing you need to know is that there were no black people in Oregon at all. <laughs> or but indigenous I, people. Or, or indigenous uh, people. None. But, but, you, but you know what? We're, we're already getting into the review. Yeah, let, me right. stop. let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. That was just one of the funny things we always would talk about. But, but, yeah. but, but um, okay, so it's in 1815 in Oregon, and uh, we are introduced to the main character, which his name is Adam Ponsby. And Adam Ponsby is a backwoodsman who is going to the nearest town, which is 12 miles away from his farm. And he's going in to trade. And he decided that amongst the other things he needs to get on this trading trip. <laughs> Such as a plow, is, a plow. Excuse me, do not, look, 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 listen, oh, listen, sorry. We're, we're not going to be interrupted during the summer. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay? I, I'll dip All right. so Yes, because I wanted to say things, a calamity backwards me. <laughs> amongst the other, you, you guys. Sorry, are, are take it away, bro. You got sorry. it. Right. We're so sorry. We're you so got sorry. it. So in 1850, in Oregon, we are introduced to Adam Ponsby, who is a backwoodsman, and he lives on a farm 12 miles out of town. And when he came into town on this particular day, in addition to the things that he decided he needed to trade for, he also decided he was going to get a wife just on that shopping trip. So, you know, uh, we, <laughs> you know, plow and then wife so whatever else was on his list <laughs> wife wife was also on the list and of course the people in town uh scoffed at that because they you know i mean how are you just going to come in and get a wife right um but what he did as he was walking around he saw somebody who caught his attention who is millie and millie is uh the ultimate other main character in 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 this movie and he millie caught his eye because she works at an inn where she serves uh all the local townspeople specifically a lot of men go there in order to be able to uh you know i guess get their lunches or, or, or whatever while they're working and uh he saw how she was able to work in that circumstance and be able to be a strong woman in that uh, in that circumstance. And so that, you know, he got, uh, to quote him, when he saw her in there, he said, she's sassy as can be. And so that, <laughs> that interested him. So he went into the inn to uh, taste her cooking. He loved it. Uh, he said it was good. And he said, after that, he walked out and she was working. She was milking a cow and he asked her to marry him. And long story short, she said yes. So they got. Wasn't it wasn't a long story. She said yes. <laughs> wasn't long Quickly. Janiyah. Sorry. <laughs> Just a few minutes. Okay. So they they left. So M Millie fell in love with it. Adam Ponopi, which is why she got married to him. From what she says, as soon as she saw him, Adam Ponopi, of course, is a big, you know, stocky tall you know he's very colorful he's a redhead whereas everybody else you know in the town is a brunette for some reason but he's you know he's, so he's, yeah. he's, so he's, he's he's visually stunning walking into you know so she and, and in the yeah, town fell in love with him people. and she was she, not yet the, the church steeples don't come again and so we so she uh that's why she fell in love with him and agreed to get married so they got married and now they're riding back to the farm. Um, riding back to the farm, we realized that Millie thought that she was now only going to have to care for just Adam because she's been growing up in this inn and working with all these men and having to serve all these people. And she was very excited to see, you know, just be able to work for one man, but uh, work, uh, you know, be married and only take care of one man. Don't dox me or whatever that, that I meant. Take care of one man. All right. So once, uh, once, and Adam now realizes that he hasn't told her the truth, which is the fact that he has six brothers waiting at this farm who all live at the farm, and these people do not live in civilization. So 
it's, it's a rough group. It's a rough group of seven, seven people. So uh, once he realizes she thinks that she's just going to be taking care of him, he's kind of caught in this situation where he doesn't want to, I guess, make her feel bad. So he doesn't bring it up until they get to the farm. And she starts realizing that, uh, you know, she asked the first brother she was introduced to, like, do you live around here? And he said, not around here. <laughs> you know, like, like you, live, <laughs> you live here. And so she meets all the brothers. The brothers all have Bible names. They're Adam, Benjamin, Caleb, uh, um, Daniel, uh, uh, e Ephraim, e Frankincense, which he goes by Frank. But there's no, they're all Bible names. There's no F names in the Bible. So they call him Frank, but his real name is Frank. It says, to which he will engage you in physical combat if you bring up <laughs> his real name. And then, and yes, this is a musical, by the way. Okay, so. And Gideon. And, yeah, and Gideon. So, uh, those, so, those are, so those are the brothers that she all meets within these first couple of seconds that she's there. So, um now she she has she's obviously struggling here because this is 1850 so she's married that's just that's what it. that is yep. so she's married so she and even though she wanted and was dreaming about taking care of one man she's been in this circumstance where she's had to manage a whole bunch of men and so there's a moment where she's going back and forth and you can see her um, after Adam showing her around the house and basically saying, look, this is where you'll do laundry. This is where you'll cook. This, is, this room needs some cleaning. You know, all those different types of things. And after all of that, she has a moment where she's struggling and she kind of snaps into it, like, you know what? All right, I know, what, I know how to do this. Let's do it. So she cooks dinner. And once she cooks dinner, she rings the bell, everybody comes and they're just jumping on the food. And this is where she realized how uncivilized these people are. Not only will they fight at the drop of the hat, like you miss, you know, because that you know, they were fighting between each other uh, and everything like that as soon as she met them. But not only that, they don't have any table manners or anything, anything civilized to do with them at all. So when she saw this, she, you know, they're jumping on the food. They didn't say grace, which is in that, area just unheard of and so she tips over the food the whole table of food on them and said you know uh, basically if this is how you want to be if you're going to uh, act like pigs you're going to eat like them you know it just threw the uh through all the food on them so later on she talks to adam later on that night when they're supposed to spend their wedded, wedding night together this is all this all happened in one day by the way so when they're about to have their Day. Yeah, hard day. So when they're about to have their um, their their wedding night, she basically says, "Like, look, you got me. You know, like you 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 wanted somebody to be up here and be a working girl, and just clean up and do all of that. And I could do all of that, but if that's what I am, then I need my own quarters because a working girl gets her own quarters. And so he's just shocked because Adam, remember, he's for whatever reason, a little more civilized, but he also grew up in this mountain around nobody. So in his mind, he's like, wait a minute, I just picked you up, you're my wife. Like, what are, what are we even talking about here? But he ultimately decides he's going to sleep in a tree if he can't <laughs> sleep. <laughs> it's wedding day for the night, to which she decided that, all right, well, you're the oldest brother. I wouldn't want you to lose face. And she said, you know what? Come on back in and enjoy your wedded night. So after that, the next morning, all the brothers wake up and all their clothes are gone. So what happened is, is Millie went in, took all of their clothes, washed them, they and they smell Millie's cooking in the morning. So they think, okay, Adam must have got everything, you know, straight. But little do they know. Millie is a very, very strong woman. And if there's any woman to traverse, traverse the circumstance, it's definitely her. Yep. And so she went in, got all of their clothes at night, took them out so she could wash them because these clothes, people, have not been washed. Awful. In ever, probably. Oh. So, 
they're all in there with their underwear on, which is also very dirty, including them. So dirty, in fact, that she demanded for them to give them her underwear so that their underwear so that she can, and they got on the long, you know, button up, long sleeve, <laughs> long pant underwear. It was uh, hot. Yeah, they were hot. So, you know, <laughs> so she, she uh, basically said that the reality of what happens, it, it happened is that, look, Adam uh, had already been up, got his breakfast and he was already out. So they couldn't even appeal to him. And she was standing not only between their clothes, but between their food and their <laughs> ultimate freedom in this particular moment. And they tried her and she snapped back. Like, I'll come in there and take, basically I'll come take that underwear off. And then, <laughs> Aubrey, you, Aubrey froze up. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. I'll keep going until he gets Us back. Brothers, okay. Bro, so you froze. Now, you froze. You froze a little bit. The last I thing we heard you say, yeah, we heard you say that that uh, she she was gonna get them underwear, and okay. then she uh, went in. She went in. She was gonna go in, and then they. And then they got. Them. They okay. agreed if, to if, give her the underwear. Yeah, they agreed to give her the underwear when, when they realized that she was not going to be refused. Okay, so this. So now they come down. They um, excuse me, have breakfast. And they're all in towels. And it was so funny because some of them were, had been in that underwear so long, they showed them like trying to figure out how to take it off yeah. because they, had, they were basically the stinkiest people in, in the world. But now they're all shaved up. <laughs> and, and when they're at breakfast, th this was basically, the reason why that moment is important is because this is when she starts the process of civilizing these six brothers. And the brothers mentioned the fact that they not only do they not know how to be civil, that they never even saw, they hardly ever saw a woman because they grew up in the backwoods. Okay, so the, uh, the she says, well, you got a big sister now is going to help you. And now the plot is they're going to go to this barn raising, and she's, which is a couple of months away, and she's going to spend month. that. She has one month. She has a month to... Um, basically teach them how to interact with civilized people and especially women. So she does that. We uh, fast forward to the barn raising. They get there. Now, here's the key. These guys are fighters. Like they grew up fighting each other. They're extremely tough. And they're in this circumstance where they're coming into this barn raising. Everybody else is dressed in drab colors. They're dressed in, you know, very <laughs> colorful <laughs> Easter egg colors. They have the, you know, they're all shaved and looking nice. And like a my sister said earlier, than everybody else. <laughs> and they're, they're way taller than everybody else. And, and uh, one of the uh, local townswomen says, they're all as tall as church steeples. And that's one of the <laughs> funny uh, moments that my sister was talking about before. But basically, obviously, none of the men in the uh town like these guys because they're tall and good looking and, and all the women are uh, like oh excuse me Janai sorry it is. all right <laughs> we're almost done okay so they they <laughs> <laughs> she cannot so help it <laughs> they essentially once Put basically but basically now are they physically just something that these women have never seen, but they have had a month of Millie training, teaching them how to interact and see the thing was is in the town, Millie was somebody who everybody looked up to. So there would be nobody better to teach them how to interact than her. And so when they're meeting all the town's women, the younger ones are, are, are married. Uh, and one more thing, it's a highly competitive situation because there's like five or 10 men for every woman, according to what they say. So uh, every single woman, according to what they say. So uh, they engage in a, in a, a dance battle, a, a 19, a 1850 dance battle. And basically they showed all these guys who the best dancers were, which was of course them. And so the women obviously ended up choosing on the Pontipi brothers. Okay. So once now that, now the guys really don't like them. So now when they actually start the bar raising, they're physically accosting the brothers who have agreed not only to be Dapper Dan's, but also not to fight. 
So they're, because they told Millie, we won't fight, you know, so they're working really hard not to fight. But I mean, these towns dudes are hitting them upside the head with boards and hammers and all kind of stuff. When Adam notices, he's like, what are you doing? Because we're Pompeys. We we beat stuff down. You know, like like that. That's what we do. We're we're back what was been and basically they're like, look, we promise we're not gonna have any fight. So lo and behold, one of the towns men goes after Adam. Bro, now, bro yeah. I know I'm not supposed to interject, but I did want to say that Adam called his brother, his brothers, lily livered, chicken hearted <laughs> lick spittles. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know that is how he felt about the fact that they were letting these local brunettes, okay, <laughs> treat them <laughs> like they were not about it. Okay. Well, he because it's, it's Lily, the, <laughs> Lily had made jack of daddies out of them. <laughs> it's, 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 um, it's Lily the second, and chicken hot and lick spittle. It's the, uh, <laughs> it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the, uh, the second best musical insult of all time, other than Draco Tell Gutter Snipe. <laughs> from that's for I, I'm ashamed of you both. That's from my fair lady. Of course, it's from my fair lady. That's so okay, good. All right, that's it. So good. <laughs> my brain was like, wait, what? Wait. Oh, yeah, that was the best my one. My fair I, lady. Wow. Oh, my terrible. God. Oh, Anyway, that, that that one that one's on the list too. Yeah, that one, that's on that the one list. gotta be on the list. It All has right. to. So anyway, um Adam uh, one of the townsmen ended up attacking Adam. Now this was too much for the brothers to handle because Adam was already married to, to Millie, and so they weren't even he wasn't a, a factor in this whole, you know, alpha male competition situation that they were in. And so once they did something to Adam, that was it. And once it was on, it was on. So basically the Ponopee brothers beat up everybody in the town. <laughs> yes, this is a musical. <laughs> and they beat up everybody in the town. And and it was it was bad. It was it was it was a bad beatdown. So after the beatdown, obviously, even though the women love them, this is gonna this creates an impossible situation because this is very old school. These people are not going to let them date the daughters of the town after they beat up all the men of the town. You know, so this is... <laughs> so now they are back at the farm. They're very upset. Um, Adam, uh, uh, Millie wants Adam to talk to them. And basically, they're coming to the realization that we'll never be able to you know, in this movie, people fall in love very, very, very quickly. So they're all in love now with these people they met once, with these women they met once. And they are heartbroken because they're not going to be able to have them. Millie wants Adam to talk to everybody, which he does. Now, and but see the thing about Adam, Adam is definitely not involved in any type of way to be able to handle the situation. And I, I the one part of the movie, I don't know why she thought he could, you know, but anyway, so his solution to the problem, again, very simple, was based out of this story called The Sobbing Women, which was in one of the books that Millie has. It's which, the Sabine Women. No, it's, I, the, the name of the story is a short story called Sobbing Women. The, the myth? But the, well, there, there is, I just looked it up. There's a story called Sobbing Women. Okay. So I don't, I don't know, I don't know if that's, because her book, the book that she brought with her was Plutarch's. Do you remember? It was like, a, um, I, I knew we were going to get caught here. Okay, anyway, go ahead, bro. Go ahead, bro. Yeah. But, 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 but anyway, there is a story that is a short story, which is called Sovereign Women, which is also some type of um, Roman myth or story. I don't, don't quote me on that, but basically based on Sabine women, which... Uh, in this story, the Romans essentially kidnapped some Sabine women, brought them back, and the Sabine women ended up falling in love with the Romans. And when their people came back to get them, they stayed with the Romans. And so Adam's <laughs> thought process was, well, we'll just go kidnap all these women, <laughs> bring them back, plus a preacher, because, you know, we're going to make it all legit. And... Once we do that, 
uh, we'll get everybody married. You all have your women. And just like in this story, they're going to love you. They're going to love you because deep down, they want you to come get them. All right. So that's his thought process, which obviously him being a patriarch in a family, they all went along with. So they go down to kidnap all the women that they met earlier <laughs> that week that's or whatever. <laughs> uh, and the women were fighting, but not really. <laughs> and, and so they they all brought, which I'm sure, I know you got something to say about that later. I really do have something to say <laughs> okay. about that. Okay. All right. They all right, were so fighting. They were fighting, bro. They were fighting? Yeah, okay. at that all point. Right. They were being nabbed out of their homes. They were literally being pulled out of windows, snatched off of porches, we'll discuss it okay keep going keep going we'll, we'll review. all right so they all get the they all get their women now they're all on the wagon headed back to the farm it's winter now and so adam uh they they have to go through this pass to get to the farm which is the only way to get to the farm but if you make noise in the pass it'll seal off the pass with snow, with the avalanche until spring. So they get them through the pass and they let, and then they make a lot of noise, shoot off guns so that the pass drops. And now the townspeople can't get to the farm until the pass is open, which will happen in the spring. Now this is Oregon in 1850. So that could be a tremendous amount of time. So once they get back, obviously Millie, comes out and she is like beside herself she can't even believe they would think that something like this could work they forget to kidnap the preacher so they can't even get married anyway even if even if somehow this plan worked it could work because they don't even got the preacher so there's just multi levels of her anger and even though these are some of the toughest men or the toughest men probably in the state she kicked them all out the house they had to sleep in the barn, and Boom. and Adam, of course, is not sleeping in no barn. So he went up to and she another. Said, she said, "You can." She said, "The house is for the ladies. You can sleep in the barn with the other livestock." Ah, don't play I think with she Millie. said. The, I think she said the rest of the animals actually. But either way, that that's that that's what she that, that she was very upset. So that's they go. I keep, tell, I keep telling you to keep yourself Adam, on mute. You don't listen. <laughs> Adam <laughs> Adam uh, goes to uh, a trapping cabin that they have because he's not going to sleep in the ca in the the uh, barn. But all of them actually end up sleeping in the barn, and I think subconsciously, uh, well, consciously or subconsciously, they just didn't want to leave the women. You know, they're they're women. So this starts an extremely long winter in which you see the women who were kidnapped begin to, you know, like um, attack them, but attack them in increasingly flirtatious ways, basically. So, so, but basically over this winter, where it's implied that they established relationships. Okay, so spring comes around. Oh, also within this winter is revealed that Millie is now pregnant. So Adam doesn't know because he's in the trapping cabin. And because he is in a trapping cabin, Aubrey's uh, camera has done a, did a disrespectful situation again. Everybody, uh, because he is in the trapping cabin. Oh, you froze one again, again, bro. Oh man, I don't know what to do about this. I guess we're just keep going and I don't know. Well, you, you left off at the trapping cabin that he's in the trapping cabin and he doesn't know about the... Okay, so he's he's in the trapping cabin. He doesn't know. So, um... And he doesn't know. And because this internet oh, did the thing man, again. He's again. And so, since he doesn't know, um, everything is just happening. All the relationships okay, grows he's back. back. Hey, man. Man. <laughs> Bro, if you freeze again, we'll just pick up the recap and finish it. But go, go. Okay. Because you're so close. 
Yeah, I'm so close, but this is so. This is so crazy. Adam, Adam went so to the cabin. He Adam went no to the idea. cabin. He had a he was a baby. He didn't, know he, he, didn't, he know. didn't know he had a baby. Mm -hmm. Spring comes around. The implication is that over the long winter, all the couples fell in love. So, um, they're dancing and singing together, but spring means the pass is open. So, while once once so now also Millie had her baby once spring happened so Gideon so once Millie did have her baby the pass was open that Actually, means that all of the fathers and brothers mm -hmm. um all of the kinfolk were on their way to the small farm to course to go get all the daughters and as they were saying to string them up from the nearest tree and they were ready. They had and them wagons. They, they had their were guns. Completely ready. Yep. And so as they're on their way, um, they get there. But as they're on their way, Adam comes back. And Adam says, you know, basically I was wrong. And I he finds out because Gideon has actually gone up to the trapping cabin to tell Adam, hey, you have a daughter. And I wouldn't count myself of a man if I didn't tell you that you weren't doing anything right and of course Adam in his manly alpha male situation he's like of course Millie would have a daughter <laughs> he didn't believe Just Gideon. His, he didn't believe he did, Gideon he, he did, thought it was he, he thought it was believe, a trick he, said, he thought it was a trick and he said of course you would have a daughter and Gideon said listen I wouldn't hold myself any kind of man he was like Millie doesn't want you back she's a she's spunk she has spunk she has pride Basically, they have recognized, all the six brothers have recognized Millie's strength as a mm -hmm. woman. Mm -hmm. uh, and saying that, that she has too much going on to be worried about you being up in this trapping cabin. Mm -hmm. She's been taking care of all 12 of us. And so <laughs> he punches Adam to, to assert his manness, to let him know you're, you're a bum. And so eventually you do see Adam come back. And to be clear, cabin. Gideon is the youngest brother. So it's yes. like this teeny so little a, one can be, or I'm just a normal smallest. height man listen, <laughs> punching exactly. a gigantic well, man. Listen, Janiah, you, know. you ain't gonna you ain't gonna do that to me neither up here while I'm trying to summarize. I ain't gonna let you do it. I ain't gonna let you. Bro, you're so frozen. And so <laughs> Adam comes back, he has an epiphany. Um, saying that if anyone was to ever come and take my daughter, I would hurt them. And so he's like, we have to take the girls back. And so while he says, hey, let's round them up. Let's take the girls back. The guy Gideon finds out, goes and tells the other five brothers. And the other five brothers, they're all asserting themselves against Adam, which is something that you don't do. That's the older brother. He's the man of the house you get the okay from him and also being that you're the one that created this idea of going to steal them and so <laughs> um adam said don't you see if we don't return them they will never let you be with them they're absolutely not gonna let you be with them now and so now that um the guys were like no we won't let you but then they realize what adam is saying and they're all right let's go millie comes out and she says listen the girls are gone so the girls have ran all the ladies have ran and they've hidden because they don't okay want to listen 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 I'm, I'm picking back up i made some adjustments and i know you all might be thinking well if you had adjustments to make why didn't you make these adjustments prior to this conversation starting well I had the adjustments that weren't make that weren't working were the adjustments I originally made. And we're just keeping this thing live and interactive, you know, as it happens <laughs> organically. And that's just what happened. So now I believe we are going to be good to go. All right. And so I, as I heard where you were, Brittany, I'm going to continue where you were. Okay. Where, where the women ran off to different parts of the farm. And now Adam is, they're convinced, the, the brothers are now convinced that the best thing to do is to return the women to the town. But obviously the townspeople are already on the way. So this, this is a very bad timing uh, situation. Also now the women don't want to leave at, the, at this, at this 
uh, point. So um, now all the, uh, so anyway, while they're trying to go find, while the brothers are trying to find their um, counterparts to get them back to the townspeople, the townspeople show up. And they grab all the Ponderby brothers and they're ready to string them up to a tree. Excuse me, just like Adam said he would if somebody, you know, uh, uh, took, uh, uh, took his daughter. And now, and the only thing that stopped them was that they heard a baby crying. And Brittany, did you talk about the baby crying? Mm -hmm. I didn't okay. that. So, so while they were looking for all, you know, all the brothers and the, the women who got, um, uh, kidnapped, they heard a baby crying. And you know, back then, the only thing that will trump everything else is you not having a baby out of wedlock. So we, you know, whatever we got to forgive or, you know, whatever's going to happen. And so when they finally caught everybody and they gathered all the, the girls and they're like, you know, we heard a baby. Whose baby is it? And they all respond, Mine, mine. mine all together because they know that that's the one thing that will stop, you know, their boyfriends, I guess, at this point for, for getting hanged is if they, is if somebody thinks they had a baby with, with them. That has to be figured out before any hanging situation is completed. So long story short, it fades to the end. We, and the, now we're at a shotgun wedding with all six brothers and their girlfriends, and they, uh, everybody ends up getting married. So that is the, uh, oh! Obviously, Millie, ha oh, I talked about that, that Millie had the baby on. Yeah, on, 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 on. yeah. Okay, you did, yeah, 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 you yeah, did. Yeah, you did. yeah so that, that was the end of the movie. Which the baby's name is Hannah, to Hannah. continue with the alphabet that um, it could have been Adam Hagar the, or Hepzibah. Or Hepzibah. And they stuck with Hannah. We're so pleased for that baby. So <laughs> I actually, when we were preparing for this, I looked, I tried to find who played baby Hannah upon me. I was curious. I literally I was thought about find, that. I was unable to find it. Oh. Because she would be, what, like 50 or 60 right now? When the movie came out in 54, so... Um, on 2000, she would be 46. She would be 76. Yeah, she could still be around. Still be well, around. not a lot, not a lot, but some of them are still around. Mm -hmm. Like, um, like Millie, she's still, she's still around. Dorcas, I mean, Julie Newmar. Julie Newmar. I'm, I'm Dorcas ain't going nowhere, honey. Don't play with Julie Newmar. <laughs> All right, so Dorcas let's been fine. <laughs> been fine since the 50s. All right, so let's get into it. Man, that was a great I, I feel like I pro and I feel like I tried to do really fast, but I think it's a I think it's a it's a complex windy tail that we know so well. Yeah, but I, I but that I was the think, fastest you could do it. Yeah, I don't think any of it could be left out unless you I agree. Say, unless you just say one sentence like you know this is the movie of you know based on this story. I I, I think if you're going to tell the story, you gotta. You got so to. Yeah, I think that was a good recap, bro. You right. know, because you hit all the main pieces. And I, I you yep. know, I just, when I, when I think about, there, it, 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 there was a point, I was watching it today. Me and Brittany were watching it at the same time, just for our re refresher, as if we can't recite the entire literally. movie. I mean, I'm watching it and I'm literally able to speak the lines, say, sing every lyric of every song. But watched it again today, and I had to pause for a minute, and I called Brittany, and I was like, there are so many themes in this movie that are problematic with today's eyes on it, you know? Just starting out with this very, the way the movie opens, which is Adam Ponope just marching through town, sizing up all the women, deciding which one he's going to pick and marry. I mean, <laughs> I think that is so hilarious. And it's funny because, yes, it's him being cocky, but it was also like quite plausible that he, I mean, it was like not an unrealistic situation for him to just like pick any woman he wanted and just, you my wife now, and just take her away. You know, so I just- but this was 1850. Right. I was just saying, these are the kinds of things that would be problematic. No, 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 I, I mean, well, 
Right. The whole, I mean, the whole concept, <laughs> you know, would be would be problematic now. But I, but the, I think that the funny thing about this movie is one thing that made me enjoy it so much is that this is a movie about 1850, shot in 19, well, released in 1954. So obviously, um, we're talking about a, 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 a movie being shot in a time where a lot of these, the flavor of a lot of the themes were still there. So it, 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 I'm just talking about in terms of male, female relations. But if you think about it, um, but it, I felt like the movie was a parody of it, not a endorsing it. Mm. I, so, so I didn't feel like, because the way the movie is shot, it is saying all of this stuff is ridiculous. Like, like, like it's saying the fact that you, because they did, when, when she, in the beginning, when he went into the, um, into the uh, general store in the, in the beginning, and like you said, he went to tr trade for some tobacco and a plow, and uh, uh, so I think he said some wheat or something. It knows because they have a, they are a wheat farm, so it's it was molasses. Molasses, molasses, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yep, yep, molasses. And I, what you gonna do with all that molasses? But anyway, so 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 he and, 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 chewing, and chewing tobacco. That's all they was eating. That's what it was. I, 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 don't, I don't know what was going on. Maybe they was just drinking it. I don't know. But but um so but the point is is that even in that store, the lady was like, just to think you could come in here and trade for a woman. You know, <laughs> like like so they actually had a vocal component in every moment that they did something you that know was ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah. They, 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 they had somebody so and in every circumstance, it was a woman pointing it out. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying, I, I don't, I feel like in this situation, it could be argued yeah. that it wasn't highlighting these things or even just showing this is how it was. It was actively. It was showing uh, times changing. It was yeah, reacting it, to it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, so that, so that's how I, I felt like him coming in, sizing up the women. <laughs> talking <laughs> about, talking about, bless your beautiful heart, the, the wherever name, the name is, you may the be. The name of the song is, is, is "Bless Your Beautiful Heart," which is, I mean, I think and, and, that. <laughs> and he's walking through the town, looking at each woman he sees, pretty and trim, but kind of slim. Heavenly eyes, but all oh, that eyes. Eyes. got to be right. <laughs> it's to be so no one for me. But here, here's here's my thing. As I'm <laughs> watching it, I'm like, this this is a movie about 1850. It was shot in 1954, and in 2020, men still have the same mindset. Mm. That bless your beautiful hide, because I'm just walking around saying. Pretty and trim, but kind of slim. Heavenly eyes. Well, well, oh, that well, size. Well, here's, here's and this the, is, but this is here, literally here. what is still happening. It's like online dating. It's still dating. happening. It's like but online dating. Listen, it's listen, it. listen, listen, listen. Here's, 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 here's Adam the was thing. the first swiper. We he could, was the first we, swiper. <laughs> we, could, we could talk about all that. And it, that's not about this movie, though. This movie. But that, that's what we get listen, into. Listen, that's listen, what listen. we get into. But, but, <laughs> Look, but we uh, okay. But what I'm saying is, is if this movie, but this movie was showing that that was the wrong way to be. You, you but I'm just pointing right. I see that, but I'm also saying nothing has changed. Yeah, but that's, that's a, a separate that, conversation. That no, it's in this conversation because it's what we're talking about. We're talking we're, about this movie Brittany, that is in, Brittany, informing, bro, being a part that. of life. She's I'm not, not saying that. In, she's not saying the movie should have been different, right? I'm not saying. <laughs> I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that, you know, reality does inform art in some ways, and so in this movie, while it could be considered a parody of what was happening in the 1950s, I think parody is going a little far, guys. Right, but say. but if if this, I'm just using his language. If this is it, and it's like showing, like this is ridiculous, you guys. But it's literally what is happening then. 
and what is still happening now. So it's like they're, we're still treating women disposable. And I'm walking up to you because Adam walks up to Millie real smooth. First of all, he comes into the inn and he's like, first I need to sample that cooking. She's cute to him. She's sassy. And now he needs to see if she can And cook. she's a hard worker. He saw and her chopping wood. He saw yeah. her chopping wood. He was like, that's all I need to know. I walk in, let me taste this cooking. This, this cooking. Clearly, Millie is like, okay, who are you? Because you don't come into the end. So she is taken aback by him. She really was. She, she spilled some stew. That's how, like, he took her it, breath away. He did. Exactly. So she did, like, be like, okay, you're different. But he was like, can I have some stew? I mean, she poured some stew on his plate. He's like, can I have some ketchup? And she's like, oh, my stew can stand on its own two feet. So he's like, okay. So finally, Adam has somebody that's checking her. See, a lot of times y'all guys be acting like y'all don't like that. <laughs> well, so, I'm, I, y'all need I'm just, somebody that's I'm about to look, say, look, my look, 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 can I, stay I, on his own two all, feet. All, all I'm saying is, I, I feel like this movie, from, one of the things I've really liked about it from the beginning is that this movie was so misogynistic, but I believe it was a feminist movie that uh, uh, I'm trying to think of a better word than parody, but basically, um, it was just, use- it was pointing out the changing times because yeah. it was like even in that. So, and it's so funny because we don't get we don't know the exact period of time that um, Adam's parents, that the Ponderby brothers' parents died. We don't know. We don't know how long those men had just been up there isolated all together making up their own rules for what society was supposed to be we do know I actually, that I actually I actually worked that out if we could interject for one second you please i didn't figure out that when the parents died well the movie is basically we know when the t- dad died the, when when gideon was born oh well that's what i was just that i i, I was I, I was assuming that that's what i was talking about so I, I was just assuming that no matter what, after that there was, you know, they were on their own. You yeah. know, like after mm-hmm. that, which Gideon which was why, born and Paul went and chopped because, the tree on himself. <laughs> yeah, because he was he Some was thirty five. He was thirty five in eighteen fifty, right? Who was Adam? Well, okay. I'm saying when. So I was trying to figure out an age for Adam. So Adam well, was well, thirty five. The actor who played him was thirty five. Oh, okay. okay. So, All right. that, so, so, but that I don't think sense though because Gideon had to be at least eighteen. He was at least eighteen in that yeah, movie. Yeah, totally. So, so you, so you, yeah, 16, I was thinking, I would say sixteen to eighteen. Yeah, somewhere in there. Really? He definitely wasn't younger than that. I mean, the way they I, had I, him I, acting. I, I was, I was. He was like, he was like Adam. You know, you're not going to come see your own daughter. I, I wouldn't count myself any kind of man if I didn't show you how I felt. Like they gave him very youthful language, which made me feel like he was really playing a teen. Like I thought he could be 17. Yeah. You know, I didn't well, give him. I, a- I figured, I thought he was like 20. Well, you know, the, the general point I, is, I, I, we don't I know. Like, I thought he was like 20. Um, yeah. I was thinking that Adam would be, you know, so if, if he's 20, then that means that he is, uh, I was thinking around 10 years, Adam was like maybe 10 years older, which means that um, bottom line is if he's 20, you subtract, you know, to his dad must have died around whatever, whatever age Gideon is, that's how long they've been on their own. So, yeah. so we're, we're talking 15, 20 years. Yep. But, that that makes sense. Okay, I mean, so I just looked up what's the average marrying age in the eighteen fifties. A male was twenty six and a woman was twenty three. Okay, so we'll, we'll yeah, just say they, they were on their own about fifteen twenty years. Maybe so. You know, around, and I, around there. Yeah. the The point is, we know that Adam had some of his formative years in the Eastern region. Cause he, mm-hmm. he talks about that when he's yes. first making his marriage pitch to, to, yep. to Millie, he says, listen, I realize I've literally just met you 50. I'm paraphrasing. I met you 15 seconds ago and I'm, I'm proposing to you. He said, but it's because of the nature of my lifestyle. 
I do not come downtown very to town very often because I'm a farmer. And it might be months before I get down here again. I need to go back right now with my wife. And that's you. And he says, if we, were <laughs> back, if we were back east, he says, I would court you over a period of two to three years. He even spells out the steps. He was like, first, I come up to you at church, say hello. Then I come and sit on your porch for two or three years. And then I eventually ask your father for your hand. He said, I just don't have that time. And I can't do that because of your pride. I need to take you back to the mountain with me no, right now. You got to say it correctly. He asked her, you going to make me wait all that time because of your pride? <laughs> you old, Adam, you all smooth, little oh, manipulative. <laughs> and I love her response. Her response was, well, I got to finish my chores. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> The, the point, the point is that Adam, Adam, Adam was, so the, uh, there were parts of this movie that were, I mean, the whole movie, there was a lot of men having ownership over women for sure. But even in this movie, as Aubrey was pointing out, Adam's ideology is an extreme because he is literally not even doing the kind of courting that the, that the, 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 the um, what, what do we call them? The brunette men. The brunette local men were doing of the women in town. So, so Adam represented an extreme. And as he was the male figure for his brothers, they all were in that very extreme mindset. And this is, let, let me just tell you that I truly believe, I don't know if it was purpose, purposely done or not, but I feel like this movie is very complex because I also believe there are certain realities that even within this, like they're basically trying to highlight the 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 bad parts, and well, not the bad parts, but how misogynistic or the misogynistic parts of this society. They're 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 basically um, showing that, and, but I also like how within that there are certain realities that. Uh, we all deal with that people don't like to even talk about, like the fact that, look, Millie was, you know, turned up when she saw him, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and I like how they deal with that too, you know, and like simultaneously dealing with the misogyny, but at the same time, when she saw Adam Potter, you saw she, her reaction. She was, he was killed her. To him, you know, and- And, and it was and like, her choice. It was her choice. Yes, he didn't, he didn't yes. put her over his shoulder. I mean, he proposed. She could have said no. Because apparently to, she had accepted other in proposals and then turned and, them down. Which was another subtle, uh, mm -hmm. a, a subtle point that she had accepted and broke off other engagements. Mm -hmm. Which means that, you know, in this movie, they were probably even a little more progressive in 1850. This 1815 town may have been a little more progressive than other the towns. Actual just 1850. <laughs> than the actual 1850. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure that back then there wasn't a lot of agreeing to marry somebody and just cutting it off, you know, where you don't want to. And you know, it's so funny because my, 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 the, my, it's so, because like a lot of my depth of the conceptualization of this period is through historic romance novels. And in those, in those, in those novels, all of the women are very independent, very self-assured, very much changing the time. And so I totally lumped Millie right into that grouping of women who at that time, they had made tough choices because many of them started out back East, you mm -hmm. know, where in the earlier where, where colonization of, of um, this, this land first started and they made choices to come and help, you know, um, colonize the West. And so, and so they had done long journeys. They had made life choices. They made sacrifices. And so the women who did that were women that had a level of aspiration for some autonomy. They wanted to have, you know, more of a sense of indi individuality and self. So the movement to the West was progress 
And so the women, therefore, were somewhat more progressive. Mm -hmm. that, but again, it's not like I've been reading textbooks. It's like, no, 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 I got you. Know, you. But, I got you. I, but there's I'll something fix. about the woman who would make the Oregon Trail, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and, and travel that and far. Especially it, for Millie to have no family. She doesn't have a mother. She doesn't have a father. Mm -hmm. And her father left her that book by Plutarch, which is a philosopher. So he obviously was creating and raising an educated, intelligent, yep. independent child. Absolutely. Without any fail. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, the thing, there was something else about Millie, and I really want to get Brittany's perspective on this, because I feel like this is something we have talked about, sis, mm -hmm. which is women just being like, all right, well, here I am in this particular circumstance. I'm about to do what I got to do because that's what Millie ended up doing. She was like, okay, clearly I have been bamboozled and led astray because my butt is up here now in this mountain with this man. I thought I was me about to be me and him up here. And I now have to take care of this whole family. Mm -hmm. Listen, she literally, it takes her 10 seconds to go to from in. WTF to rolling up her sleeves to say, listen, if this is what it is, it's what it is. And she starts to get that house in order. You know, it just reminds me so much sis, of the conversations that we have about, um, you know, these themes that women experience now of like, you know, having expectations around what it means to be ride or die. You know, that, yeah. that whatever comes at you, hang in there. If you're yeah. not working hard and taking whatever's in front of you, you don't have the right level of commitment to be in a relationship. Right. When in real life, Adam... You should have given her the choice. <laughs> oh, by the way, it's going to be my six brothers living with me. Uh, when we're sitting, when he's leaning on that cow talking about her pride, he need to be talking about them six brothers Hell yeah. that he was buying all that damn molasses for. Totally. So, <laughs> and the chewing tobacco. Well, I think, and the chewing tobacco. But I, I do, I think about that, but how even that independence, especially against black women, is weaponized. When you're able to roll up your sleeves, you're able to get done what you need to get done, do the doggone thing. It's weaponized against you if you ask for one piece of help. You shouldn't ask for help. But then if you don't ask for help, you're too independent. And it, and it, it, is, it is literally paralyzing. Mm -hmm. And so to see And if you Millie, walk away and say, I don't choose this. I, 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 don't, want, I, I don't want to sign up for this level of whatever this is. I don't Listen, accept these terms. You're you, giving up. Then you get in you trouble. You don't know for that. how to be committed. Right. <laughs> like, but I'm choosing in this using this movie. I'm gonna choose not to because I was joking. I made an IG story as I was watching. I said, let me tell you, I would have got back on that carriage. I would have gave them that handful of nourishing sorrel I had in my hands <laughs> to make some soup. I would have got back on that carriage and I would have said, oh, look, we need to go back down south to the town 12 miles from here because you're about to drop me off. You did. I, is, I, I, I'm married to one man. So what did you guys like about the movie? Like, like what are your favorite parts of the movie? I, and I don't want to, I don't not want to say, of it. well, I was just about to say, I do not want to my words right now to be mistaken that I don't like this movie. I, I'm, I not saying, love, I'm not saying that. Oh, I'm, I was about no, no, I'm, not, I'm not saying I, it all. I'm asking. I don't know. You I, posed I, that I question like I was saying I don't like it. No, I'm saying <laughs> I want to talk about the movie. So, so like, what parts of the movie do you guys like? Like, what, what part? You guys, this is funny because earlier my brother said I get offended. <laughs> Because it's funny because it's true. But also, bro, why, um, why, but, don't, why don't you like when the movie discussion goes off into like analysis and looking at current time things? <laughs> Why you don't like that? No, I'm he's saying so, what? This is he relevant was, discussion. This so is just revelating. Well, then it's true. <laughs> <laughs> he loves us so much, y'all. <laughs> well, then the, the, the thing, it needs to be changed to not movie the the, the 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 process to be there or the title should be like movie reviews and how it relates to every socio-economic <laughs> that problem is what it, that's what it's because if that's what, that's what, that's what we're doing that's a review I'm just saying, yep. if, that's if analysis talking, analysis talk, is implied talk. analysis is implied <laughs> <laughs> but so it's a good I question say, what did you like yeah that's what I'm saying like 
Like, I wouldn't know. I think analogy. I mean, I can start off this part. I I can start off. Well, please do, since you're so eager to get to it. Please do. Let's just just hope your internet holds. (laughs) (laughs) Below the belt. That's below the belt tonight. (laughs) I know, now mine is going to I mean, I could could wait. You know, I'm just, I'll just. Go, bro. Kick it off, bro. Kick it off. Let me tell you, the thing that I loved about this one of the things I love most about this movie is, is growing up, obviously, and you'll the more that we do reviews and stuff like that, you'll realize that we grew up a lot of around we grew up with musicals in our life as a part of our life. Like I mean, pretty much any musical that somebody will mention we've seen probably it was in my formative years. I still love those music, you know, uh, mm-hmm. Sound of Music, Rigadoon, uh, you know, My Fair Lady, um, uh, uh, um, West Side Filler Story, on the Roof, West Side Story, you know, so like all of these movies I love, but the thing about it is these are not uh, very masculine movies either, and, but you know, as much, as much as I love them, there's not a lot of masculine stuff going on. You know, this, these are definitely not Rambo or whatever. <laughs> you would've, you would've. But this, the one, the reason why this one was my favorite was because it had both. It was like this had some of the best singing and dancing, and it is the only movie with straight up fight scenes. And the only musical with straight up fight scenes that I can think of. Because even in West Side Story. Like when they were fighting, they were doing like you know the dance fights. It, it was jazz. It was like, jazz fighting. It's like, oh, it's, uh, that you knife wouldn't. You could clearly see the knife go to the side of Tony. It didn't go in him at all. <laughs> it, it was all good. It was all good. It was, look, it was look. Fine. It was hey, fine. look, it was fine. It was fine. I, I have no problems with West that story. But I'm just saying for me, it was a treat because in the in the beginning, <laughs> when when Millie first gets to the farm. Like and Adam is saying all her names, and uh, the one guy, and he, he, she, she realized they're all Bible names. But she's like, you know, except for Frank, I don't, I don't recognize Frank. And, and then the brother was like, but well, there weren't no F names in the Bible, you know. So that isn't that right? That's not your real name, is it, Frank? <laughs> and Frank has since hit him with. What was it like a chair? It was like a something? chair. It yeah. Was, it was like a chair. It's like he broke a chair or a stool over him. There was nothing dancey about that. And you know what? Fight. I wonder I wonder how much of that is the result of the fact that this this was written for the screen. You know, a mm. lot of the other musicals were written, they were stage plays first. Uh, so, like we talked about in the beginning, right? Right. And so this is like, okay, they they set out with the intention of the level of complexity that you can get with the movie. Gotcha. And so we were able to see like the, the 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 depths of the characters and the relationships pretty quickly, you know. Yes. So yes. yeah. So yeah, I mean, because you could just even in that moment, it's so quick, but it lets you know the dynamic of sure. this family in that one scene because it's like, okay, these are some backwoods yeah. guys. They're uh, just as bad as everybody was talking about in town. And you could tell the dynamic between them. They're very rough, rugged. And, you know, we're, some, we're breaking a stool over somebody is completely <laughs> acceptable. I mean, for real. Yeah, you and know? they were, yeah, and, and that leads me to, to, bro, I'll name one thing I really liked about the movie, which was that it was, it was, it was truly, truly a comedy. I mean, this was one of, I mean, even now, it's like, even knowing the jokes that were coming, they still made me laugh out loud. Right. Like that moment of, it's like, why is he responding in this way to his full name being said? Right. Um, And it was even just like. Or like when Gideon at the end, we stood beside Adam. I stand with Adam, but don't stand too close. Right. <laughs> it was Little like, what? Like Why? Right. Or, when, or when she was like, um, give me your, um, your, your underwear, your, your long underwear that you're sleeping in so I can wash them. And Gideon couldn't even open it. Like he couldn't even get his buttons undone because right. the thing was so 
gross. And the way that they kind of just found those little comedic moments, it was all throughout the movie. Just these those moments are, that, of, those, those of some, sheer funniness. Of sheer comedy. Yeah, sheer, sheer comedy. comedy. Sheer comedy. That's that was so one of my true. favorite things. That's so true. Even That's so Adam, true. as he's that very first, and they set it up in the beginning, and they had the comedy in the songs and also in the dialogue. You know, it was That's really so throughout. true. That's so, you know, and this, it, it, but you're bringing up a point that it's so true. Like, I, I've, I've obviously always laughed at some Russ and Brothers. It's funny. But even, even I, I was, because I was thinking about the other scene when they first, there's a scene where Millie's going to town. So the brothers go with her. Yes. And yes, this, this was yes, an amazing yes, yes. scene. But, but, Basically, when Millie goes <laughs> into the store and they see some girls, and again, they don't see, they don't get to see girls. And so they're like, <laughs> they're like, say, say something. something. <laughs> and so Benjamin comes over and he says, he says, uh, care for a chewed tobacco? <laughs> now, now, look, that's just one line, but it just so beautifully and comedically. <laughs> Give so much information. Like these guys are so far yeah. out Literally. of the loop. I think that, that was Ephraim who did that, though. But yeah, no, no, it was. I thought no, it was, Ephraim did it, and then they said, "Oh, we're so offended." And then, and then yes, Benjamin yes, got yes, out. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and yes, then Benjamin right, got right, out and right, said, right. and when Benjamin pro so so Ephraim <laughs> offers them the chewing tobacco. Yes, you're the right. women are you're offended. Right. They are scandalized. <laughs> oh, these men are disrespectful. Us. And then, and she then, said that oaf insulted us. Insulted that, oaf insulted us. <laughs> that oaf insulted us. And then, and then Benjamin <laughs> hops out the wagon to Ephraim's aid, and he says he thinks that they're offended about the quality level of the tobacco, and he says, "Well, it's dang good chewing tobacco." <laughs> <laughs> and he said, Oh, he had no he idea did. why they were insulted. He was like, all he, all he did was offer them, and then he took a moment to taste the chewed tobacco. Like, let me make sure this is good chewed tobacco before I, before I solidify this point. Let me, no, this is dang they good chewed chew tobacco. <laughs> And then, and then Millie comes out of the store. Okay, so then, of course, now the local, the local, the local um, brunettes are fighting. <laughs> They're fighting the uh, the the Bonapri brothers, or just two of them. The, just, no, no, they. They're so they only start, fighting. They started fighting. And the only one who's fighting <laughs> is Benjamin. Right. And, so, and Millie and so, comes out. Millie comes out and she's like, stop it, stop it. And then one of them in the wagon says, what fur? It's only three little ones. <laughs> <laughs> and so but she, tells, you know she tells Benjamin to stop. And he says, OK, <laughs> Millie. And he knocks out all three of the dudes he was fighting. Like, it stopped. <laughs> Yo, he was just fighting them for fun because he could have punched them out immediately. He was choosing to fight them for fun, clearly. But here's, but here's the, to be the, that, this whole sequence we're talking about was only a few minutes or, or seconds. Totally. But it gave it wasn't such that long. an insight yeah. into the whole mentality. Very well them. written. Because, like, here's the thing. They weren't bad guys. They just never had been in these circumstances. And... And the way and it was just so good how they and funny, like to your point, how they showed this because even th their level of communication was not because when she said stop, I don't feel like he was being smart. She in his mind that that's how you stop to, it. Why oh, she, right. she needs this to be over. I yeah. got you. Let me let me go ahead and knock <laughs> these dudes out then. Yeah, also, I, it was how Benjamin jumped into oldest brother action so i'm sure if adam was around adam would have been the one beating everyone up because as soon as benjamin got off the wagon ephraim was leaning up against the store door <laughs> <laughs> ephraim was chilling he was not in the fight which was so funny they were all like, just watching laughing. one fur it's <laughs> only three little ones <laughs> and the other three oh, up there were just laughing who was up there gay look you, you just brought uh, don't go too far you brought up an interesting mm -hmm. point i don't know if adam would have I, I, I think that Adam only, I think Adam was promoted to kind of last resort. 
I think that if Adam was there, he's the patriarch, he's married now, I think he would have definitely got in the fight if it was necessary, but I think that the older brother fight uh, responsibility probably is now primarily on Benjamin. I think it would have started... Uh I'm curious. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Just think about think about the barn scene. As soon as Adam seen him, his brother get hit. He was valid. Adam was ready. He was ready. And it to was go. like, and it took all five of the brothers, all six of the brothers, go. No, 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 no. <laughs> we told Millie we wouldn't do it. She was this like, is true. What? This and then is what true. did he make him into, Janaya? What did he make him into? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked. He said <laughs> you are lily livered chicken hearted lick spittles. That's, you, know you know what? And bro, I, 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 I agree with Brittany, you know, because in some ways I feel like Adam, so bro, I think that Adam would not have done the fight, but I think his expectation would have been that Ephraim did it. He would have been like, Ephraim, you're not going to let those guys tell you that you're chewing tobacco is not quality. Oh Take them out. You know, so, so funny. Listen, 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 listen. This man, I, I wish, think he would have been an instigator. I think I, wish, I think Adam would have been an instigator. I wish we could. I wish there was a way we could ask Adam Potter. I'll, I'll call uh, him. Because I'll call this him. is this is a you fact. Br- no, because this would be asked. I, I know we're I know we're kind of off on the tangent, but that was an interesting point. Because I, I am curious how that circumstance would have. Oh, because you like I like to dissect it now, don't well, you like to dissect? <laughs> oh, I like talking about the movie a whole bunch. But um, anyway, so 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 what, what, what's what's interesting is that I think that I don't think that it was a necessary because Janiah brought I think Janiah brought the or which one of you brought the concept of okay this is the oldest brother so I handled it which which one of y'all talk about that? me yeah okay me, so Brit- so Brit- the youngest and I want to say I, that is based off of how me being the youngest. And how I've seen Aubrey and Janiah go into protective mode for me. And so when I see Benjamin fighting, it made me think about, yeah, my can I, can I, that. I'm yeah, going to bring somebody try it. I'm going to bring let somebody gonna, try it. I'm going to bring one, one more thought process to this interesting tangent we're on, this, this movie uh, tangent. I think that it all, I think that it's situational. I think in this situation, Adam would have let Benjamin do, I think it would have happened exactly how it happened, and Benjamin still would have done it because I think it was probably a fighting prowess thing. And Benjamin was the second biggest of all of them. So so maybe it's because it's three of them, and this is well within Benjamin's wheelhouse to be able to handle Whereas if Ephraim got into the fight, maybe Ephraim's wheelhouse is too, uh, guys. <laughs> sure. And so in that circumstance, more would have gotten involved. So in order to uh, uh, use the least amount of melee, you're, this is a situation that <laughs> Benjamin can handle, which would also make sense why Adam fought so quickly at the bar dance mm. because it was a much different situation. Sure. Where he had to go in with extreme prejudice mm-hmm. because they were all outnumbered five to one in this mm. fight. Oh man, bro, you're you're reminding me of something else I like about the movie, but Brittany <laughs> didn't give one yet. Something you like about the movie. So even though I am someone that we should all be familiar with now, I speak about how awful gender can be. And uh, I speak about how I think men don't do right by women all the time. I I love love. And so some of my favorite parts of the movie were seeing them fall in love with the girls, to fall in love with the women, and them starting to build relationship. I thought that that was really sweet. Because I love when there's a, a... It doesn't have to be necessarily a completely happy ending. But I do appreciate just that part. Because you see the part where they're starting to actually like the men. Millie is trying to read a book to them. <laughs> and all the men, of course, they like them. And they're growing more fond. And they're all walking in the house pretending like they have some ailment. Uh, I need some liniment for my knee. Like, it's just, <laughs> they're making up things. And as each one comes in, 
the woman that he likes and that likes him, they're watching them walk out and looking for them out the window. So after a while, they're not paying attention to Millie anymore. They're it's really, Millie is like, it's so adorable. Like, loving, it's so adorable. Yeah. Exactly. And, 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 the thing, and the thing about how they do it is like, and again, I don't, I'm not trying to get it. There, there's, get there's, into it. There's a, um, <laughs> no, I don't want to get with, I'm saying without getting into this whole thing, you know, there's, like me, and I'm just talking about myself personally. You know, I, those are parts of movies that would get on my nerves. You know, like showing all that mushy, getting in love and, and, and all of that. Yeah. But to your point, I love how they do it in this movie. Like, like I, I feel like, well I feel like they found a way to do it. And these guys are still tough guys. And there's, and like, they did it in a way where, they were mushy, but a perfect amount that made me still yeah. enjoy it. So I'm just saying, I, I like that part of it as well. I, and I think it's because the women as well were not super mushy. The women were, the, the part when the women were flirtatiously getting on them, they were throwing snowballs at them with rocks in them. And <laughs> Dorcas, the biggest out of all of these women, honey, and the most flirtatious out of all of them, she threw that rock at Benjamin like she wanted that to go through his head. And, and he, was, he was, <laughs> I was like, yeah. that is it. And, yes, yeah. honey. Like, and y'all going to have to earn, like, y'all know I like you, but you're going to have to earn this. You're but see, but see, but, 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 at me. and even, <laughs> even in that situation, like, I love how, like, I feel like if she would have threw a rock against one of those uh, dudes from the town, that he would have fell down and been like, oh. right. <laughs> My friend. So, so it's like, it's like, like, yo, if you're going to be with Dorcas, you got to be the type of dude who can take a rock to the head yeah. every now and then. Like, and you Benjamin, can't be the... <laughs> Benjamin just, like, he, he, he took the, he, like, pushed the snow off the rock and noticed it was a rock. He was like, oh, it's snowballs with rocks in them. Those poor That's little right. deers. Little deers. Right. So right. I mean, that was his whole reaction. But, but it was, it was just, I, I just loved it. I well, just yeah. loved to, it. To your, point, just, to, your, to your point, Aubrey, you remember when Gideon was trying to steal his, his woman, and I do say steal, <laughs> he was trying to steal Alice. No doubt about that. And, and the guy, he was pretending to be a cat, which this is also some more comedy. So Totally. Gideon is, out, Gideon is outside trying to get Alice to come out, and Gideon's boy, uh, I think his name is Carl, or I'm not sure. Her Alice's boyfriend comes outside, sees that it's Gideon. He's about to hit him with a shovel. Benjamin just pops up out of nowhere over top of the <laughs> gate. He says, "Hurry up!" and bops. In. No, he bops the. He uh, grabs the shovel with one hand and stops it from oh, being right. swung, <laughs> and then bops him with the <laughs> and knocks him. Right. Y'all, with no effort, no effort whatsoever. The brunette brunette is unconscious, y'all. Yeah, (laughs) and you know, and and I will tell you what, it's so funny because we have barely talked about the song. And I think that says a lot about the movie because the songs and the, and the dance scenes, they move the story along. Yes. Because yes. I am a person, I watch musicals. Like, I, you know, I even like to go see live musicals nowadays. And sometimes the songs are just emphasizing a point that's already been made. And oh, you're gosh. like, okay. Or they're giving you like, like, I think I'm in love with him. I'm in love. <laughs> right. And they had a little bit of that in there. But, yeah. but the songs, but, okay. but more, but for the most part, the songs were giving you insight into the inner thoughts and they were moving the story along. Even the dance scenes, the way that people were dancing, they were telling you something about the characters and telling you the story. And um, one, one of my favorite scenes in this whole movie is this, there's this song, it's called, I think they call it The Lament, but it is when they are all, all so this is the point in the movie where you know, before they have gone back to steal the women. And the men are at the, the, the farmhouse. They are depressed because they done made a bad impression on those girls because they beat up all the men in the town. <laughs> and, they, and they just are like, we're never going to get them now. And they have this song 
that is the saddest song you've ever heard in your life. And they're like, woo. <laughs> A man can't see when he sleeps with three sheep. Anyway, it's this whole song where what they're doing is they're describing farm life. And they're describing what it's like to be isolated in farm life. And they're showing how it can never, ever be a full life without a companion. You know, it's, it's, it's you're, so good. Yeah, and that, the choreography. You're, you're, the choreography. But, 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 but before we get off that point, though, that is such a good point. Oh, and, such and, a good and, point. and I'm going to tell you because point. we, like Can't you said, we, no we, 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 we watch a lot, of, a lot of musicals. And I think, just like you said, since they're adapted, there's parts in the script that they say it and then they sing about it. Whereas in this movie, the song is the emotion. That's it right, is yeah. it is what they're trying to get across. That's so, right. you know, they don't have a conversation. Like in, a, in another musical, you would see that same scene where they were all talking about how they're missing their women. And then they would sing about missing their women, mm -hmm. right? Which is, you know, that's cool. That's how that's how musicals go. But in this one, they sang about it. You know, like yep. they, and even the songs that came after the the conversation, the it was a more of an emphasis on the emotion than repeating the emotion. It was, it was like like when Millie was singing, um, uh, uh, after you know when her and Adam were on the way, um. What was the name of the song when she was Beautiful, singing? Beautiful Day. Yeah, yeah, Beautiful, Beautiful Day. So it was almost like when she was talking about her happiness, it was almost like she would have started singing like that anyway. It was, it, like, let's say it wasn't a movie. You, you could see her being so happy that she just started to totally. sing. So I think that's a, a very some I never even thought about, but that's mm -hmm. a good point that the, maybe, because if you even look at the length of the movie, most of the musicals we watch are well over two hours. Some of them get up into the two and a half, three hour length. Like, remember um, My Fair Lady came on two uh, cassettes. Like you used to have to watch I remember it one whole long. cassette. Yeah. But that's, be but that's because they're, like you said, they're trying to, have all the script and all the music, whereas this was just flows together just so flows. much better. It just flows. Which, yeah, so that, I think that's that's. And, you know. and to to that point, it makes me think of the sobbing women song, mm. because it did just move the movie right it along. Moved the movie along. Which I was cracking up because I said this is the worst pep talk in the history <laughs> of pep talks. I, listen, you guys, Tell you're sad about, about them <laughs> sobbing women that it's lived like in you, the Roman day. Man, you miss these, such... you miss these women. Let's go get them. Like, yeah, <laughs> it wasn't like let's go take them out to go get something to eat. It was and when listen. when the Romans catch them, them women folks they catch. <laughs> Okay, I was like, this is the horrible pep talk. Look, this this, this, this like, is what you gotta wait, what? look, look, look. This is what so you have funny, to understand so about the ponies. <laughs> this is what you have to understand about the ponies. The ponies are just very simple calculators. Okay, they yep. look. It's you, true. you you gotta get the command right when you're in, and we all know people like that. Like yep. they are great people, but you cannot say to Adam. We're going to teach our kids for these books without some context. <laughs> you have to say, well, Adam, there are stories in, but the stories <laughs> we're going to teach are going to be in one context and the actual <laughs> reading is going to be in another. Right. Okay? Right. You, you, have to, you have to clarify all this stuff because <laughs> if you just let these guys go willy nilly, if you say he, you want him to stop the fight, he's going to stop the fight. Yeah, right? he's going, he's yeah. Going to knock out, knock out three You're guys. But, but also, we we talked about the um, dancing and the dancing in that scene that Janai is talking about is amazing. He does uh, the guy who plays Caleb does a dance with an axe. Yeah, it's just an amazing dance. Yes, so he's an actual. Yeah. He's a he's a ballet dancer. I think he actually is 
um, something in the credits. They were talking about he is literally like their courtesy of okay. a ballet company. Got you. Oh, and, he was so good. Yeah, he, he was great. So and, good. Um, the uh, guy who played Frankincense when right before when they were doing the in the dance battle. I told you guys this before, but that dance that there's a point where they're doing the dance battle at the uh, barn raising. Barn raising, and these guys are doing their best to stay civilized. And there's one point where they're trying to just dance with the girls, and the guys from the town keep taking them back, you know? And so you can see they're about to switch into potomy mode and uh, Millie sees it about to happen. She knows, <laughs> like, oh, you don't want it's these too guys. Much. Yeah. You don't want that. So she, uh, so they go uh, back to, she goes back to where they were dancing or approaches where they dance to, and dances with frankincense. And that is an amazing dance. It's so that, well done. It's so, so well, well done. done. It's so good. And, and the other thing that they did, and you know, so just when I was reading up about why this musical was so special, it was because the dancing was so acrobatic. And it really was. It was. I mean, that particular barn raising scene, it was, it was deep for a couple of reasons. It was deep because it was the story of the brothers falling in love with the women. It was deep because it was their, um, their instincts as backwoodsmen confronting the instincts of the local town, which is quote unquote more civilized. Um, it was also Millie settling into her family life. She's one month in, she's trying to show off her family. So it's Millie's past confronting her future, her present and her future. So that scene was so complex in so many ways. And I love the fact that they had the actual duel between the men be one where the Ponopes were going to have a leg up because the local men, they were starting the duels with things like wood. Like, why would you fight with the Ponopi brothers with wood and axes? Obviously, you're playing right into their sweet spot. So they would be trying to do these little, look what I can do with an ax. And they do like a little two-step. And then the, the, the part of the be like, that's I what you got? Literally that's what you got? And but <laughs> All I these, do is play men, with axes. All I do these, is play with axes. These brunette men, to get even further into who the type of people they were, when Adam was leaving the town with Millie at first, the one guy says, I don't like them Ponopees, and now I know why. I was like, that was the original hater. You don't even know. <laughs> you didn't even like why him. Why you don't like them? I don't know why. It was like, what? Well, and then really? even when he fought the guy that gets bopped in the head yeah. by Benjamin, he goes out, and when he's telling the townspeople, the whole lot of them beat me up. I was like, Benjamin bopped you in the head <laughs> in a millisecond. It was just Benjamin. But the whole lot of them beat you up. This is the type of people they were going up against. Like these guys. Man, are and, 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 but here's, you know what's the great thing about it is that the townsmen were professional dancers too. Mm -hmm. And like the 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 way the casting was, is that you could tell that the guys who played the Pony P brothers, because I'm sure they probably dyed all those guys' hair black for yeah. the sake of the movie but but like just like they dyed all the Ponopi brothers hair right, right. yeah so <laughs> yeah so so i'm sure that was that was part of it but you could tell why the guys who played the Ponopi brothers were the ones who played the Ponopi brothers because even though the other guys were clearly classically trained dancers they just weren't as good as the Ponopis. and the way they casted that was perfect because so perfect i honestly think everybody in that situation was dancing to the best of their ability but they just organized who, who was going to be the best like 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 these were the guys who dance better than everybody who's here because when you see them move the things the guys were doing with it what my sister was talking about as far as them they were doing stuff where like they were dancing on the side of a well or dancing on some wood beams that were put between two, you know, wood horses or, uh, you know, things like that would all be at a place where you were building a barn. And so you see them dancing get on all of these different contraptions. Right. And, and, and yes, the whole point is that the Ponopes would be much better suited. But on top of that, they you could tell that they did a good job of the casting as well. Very just, good. Just having... Well, the director, Stanley Dunnan, 
was a choreographer as mm-hmm. well. So I see that that would be you guys bringing that up. It makes so much sense mm-hmm. that that would be important to him. One of Stanley Donovan Donnan's close friends at a time, but I guess when I was reading that him, they aren't that much. But Gene Kelly was one of his well, one mm-hmm. of his homeboys at one point. So it just, everything you guys are saying makes so much sense that they would. And it was like, listen, I I really hope you know how to act because your dancing is top notch. (laughs) Except Benjamin, which we've all laughed at, that Benjamin didn't have a lot of Listen, we're not going to have no judgment of Benjamin, okay? He did his part. No, we're we're, 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 the only one never, never, he never really danced. You never see, you never see Benjamin, okay, look, Benjamin. Benjamin be sitting on the, the side. I, the All of a sudden, this CinemaScope camera didn't have him. <laughs> <laughs> ben, Ben, where'd you go? Ben, Ben, Listen, where'd you go? Look, Benjamin played his part, okay? And he was what, tall as a church steeple. What, and what I my sisters, tall as a church the steeple. Reason, the reason why my sisters are hating on Benjamin. I'm not hating on Benjamin. That okay. was great. I love me some Benjamin. Listen, it's because, I listen, wasn't hating on Benjamin look, because Benjamin, Benjamin can still have my number. Benjamin was the one <laughs> who didn't sing and dance in the whole movie. but the, Sing or dance in the whole movie. But the reason why is because Benjamin was fly enough to supersede any other casting necessities in this entire movie. Yeah. He just fit Fact. the physical description of a Pontipi so well that nothing else mattered. It he was, was almost like... He I, was the look, prototype. I bet when they saw him, they were like, well, yeah. I mean, well, oh, would you like me to read the script now? Just, yeah, you're good. Yeah. Come on and, in. And I pulled, <laughs> up, I pulled up some trivia earlier on, from Turner Classic Movies. Jeff Richards, who plays Benjamin Ponape in the film, is the only brother never shown dancing. <laughs> they, they, also, they also do confirm what we had guessed. MGM had all the actors playing Ponape brothers dye their hair red so the audience will more easily be able to distinguish them from the male suitors right. in town in their scenes together. Right. You know, the other thing they did was they always had all the local guys, as I think somebody mentioned it earlier, they were in the drabest gray yeah, right. and white. Yeah, right, they, right, were right, so, right, right. they were so they were so visually not interesting that it was like the Bonnie brothers as soon they as they came up on the looking scene, like Skittles. Yeah. They walking in here. And, and, and the thing, like and the thing is, is just that visually it looks so good. You know, it just it just it just looked so. We love the script. We love the casting. We love the dancing, the singing, the pacing of the movie. Is there anything we don't like? Oh, can I, I can I add one more thing? I like. Yep, and I have one more thing I like too. Okay, okay. You pretty you got all right. Look, yeah. one more thing I like is that in these movies that were shot in the fifties, there were a lot of black people shoehorned into certain movies. And we, you know, we'll talk about this as we, as we see these movies, but at the time, of course, it was probably even progressive to have a black person in this movie, right? Rather than not have this black person in this movie, just to normalize black people on screen. But there is one thing that there is something to be said though about I like the fact that there are no black people in this movie mm. because this movie was shot in Oregon in 1850 in a small town and I don't believe there would have been any black people in this town. Yeah, and I think I, I think those towns were either black or white. Like yeah, I don't think there were a saying. lot of mixed towns. And yeah. so when I'm watching it, it allows me to just watch the movie mm-hmm. instead of like, if you would have just had some, uh, like if they would have just shoved some random, you know, uh, a black person in, 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 which I see in certain movies without any context, it makes it, that makes me more irritated than I, I'll give you one example. Just, just, illustrate what I'm talking about. This is not a musical, but did you all, you all ever see it's, did you all, you all remember It's a Wonderful Life? hmm Do you remember the final scene? Where the mom passes away? 
Well, it, it's a wonderful life. He comes, we all know that movie, but at the end, you know, in the process of the movie, he, um, the, the main protagonist, protagonist, I uh, forget his name that quick, but the main dude in it was a wonderful life. He lost money at the bank. That was the whole, oh, wait. The whole thing. I'm, I'm confusing the movie, but yeah, the Christmas movie, my bad. Yeah, the Christmas movie. It, it's a yeah, wonderful life. My bad. But, but at the end, I don't remember any black people in this movie, except for at the end. But it was an <laughs> army. It, they, the, there was a, a part of it that was about army. That was the thing. They were military people. No, 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 no. At the end of the movie, everybody from town is coming and giving him money to replace the money that he lost, which was the main problem. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay, so, so yeah. Now, now okay. I confused thinking, it up with uh, White Christmas. Sorry, you're yeah, right. So, it's a Wonderful Life. Sorry. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. When Brittany said Christmas movie, I went to. I went to. Sorry. Go ahead. You got it. I remember now. All right. So everybody from town is coming to give him money because he has the out of body. Yep. Mm hmm. And they got this one black lady that comes in, and I don't remember exactly what she said. <laughs> But she came in and she put her money in and she was like, I was saving this for when they get me a husband. And then she said something else at the end of that. And I'm telling you, just look up that scene. And my point is saying that is, if I was watching this movie without this black lady coming in, acting like that, it would have just been a boring part of the movie because it's like the, the town you know, But you know what, bro? I have such, I, I don't disagree with you because I do get distracted when like token characters exist. Yes. But I will also say that part of the reason I'm fine with it in with the whiteness of this movie is because I'm not well educated about that. I don't have the honest history. I only have the history we That's learned true. in school, That's which true. was that only white people mattered in American history. And so um, I don't know what the accurate presence of indigenous people would have been in that town. I don't know okay. what the accurate presence of black oh, people would have been. Point. That's and only point. because I haven't educated myself on that very well, again, it, that's the only reason I'm fine with it is because I am totally fine with, because I have been socialized into a white storytelling of American history. Where okay. that is white. Also, at that time, slavery still hadn't ended. And I think that that would have been another element that you can just you would have had to explain this black person right being in so the act like right. how to, the way that they would have had to have an accurate representation of people of color they couldn't have just probably so i don't know what that would have been would it have been a free, that, that, a free okay. person would it have been um you know okay that 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 is a buffalo soldier could have been no, a buffalo soldier you know what i mean like i don't know okay that's a very very good point that's a very very good point and you know i know there's a lot like we, we could probably, I mean, obviously we could do whole discussions on just that, but totally. um, and now I'm, I'm just saying, to do some reading, but I'm just saying in, in this particular context, I liked, because I'm saying there was a lot of that tokenness happening around that time. And it's cool. Sure. You know, it, it, it is what it is. I mean, like that was the necessary. It had to happen. It had what, to happen. What happened, right, yeah. But I'm just saying, in this particular movie, it was just, you know, this is... Listen, y'all, it is what it is. It's very white. <laughs> it's very white. And, <laughs> and, and because it's so homogenous, you don't even think about you don't think any non-white characters. Yeah, and It doesn't I'm feel just... missing because it's just so white and so consistent with everything we've ever heard about the... I hate the word settling, but about the colonization I mean, obvi West. yeah, obviously you, you, you took it yeah. a lot. You took it a lot. You're, that is very, that's deep what you're talking about. And um, I'm just talking about, uh, which now I want to do some research on that as well. I'm yeah, just I actually just got a but, couple but, books in the mail. Mm -hmm. but, um, but the point I'm trying to make is in a lot of those movies, there was that token cringe point. And this was one of the ones that didn't have it. Yeah, and that's so, a good point. So well, I just said, well, bro, I, I you, like, you actually, without knowing it, you segue to the last favorite thing I wanted to mention, which is just the very well done dialogue. 
You know, it was just those, like the things we talked about earlier. Don't you like girls? We ain't never hardly ever seen one. Like exactly. this is so good. And there was actually a line that, um, that Adam said to, to a uh, Gideon, um, that I just love so much. And he's, he's recounting what his father told him about love when Gideon is sitting there heartbroken and lovesick for his girl. He, Adam says to Gideon, his, his youngest brother, love is like the measles. You get it once and the older you are, the harder you take it. You know, so there are just these, the, the, the writing. The harder it is if you to get rid of it. Yeah. yeah. The harder you take it, he says. Uh, Meaning the harder you do, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, you wasn't talking about getting rid of it. Because, you know. It's just that, harder. It's just it's, harder. It, it's like, fall, the hard, yeah. like you fall harder. You fall uh -huh. harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which but is true. In, 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 he follows that up with. <laughs> but you know what? He ruins it. But no, no, but but well, Brittany's talking about. He said, you know, most most girls is just you mean, like don't ex. worry about it. What? Yeah. No. But but I I I think he was just trying to make him feel better. I I, sure. I, I don't he think totally that he totally was. He totally yeah. was. Sure, but, absolutely. Yeah, I don't think. But he really but, it, it, but the writing, the writing, it yes. gave us such a depth of in, of in, we we knew the characters yeah. so well. Even the girls, the 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 brides. <laughs> We didn't, I mean, we didn't spend a whole ton of time with them. They kind of came in as love interests and they, none of them had a ton of dialogue, but the things that they did say and the way that they did show up, it was so meaningful that we did get insight into who they were. And we, can really, and we can really get their personality. We know their names. We're like, that's we Alice, that's Dorcas. And they weren't really, they didn't have a lot of dialogue, but when they talked, it was really showing who they were what their expectations were. There's this great scene where all of the brides, they just, they just got took, you know, and they're settling into now being essentially hostages, uh, eventually willing hostages, but hostages up here at this farm in the, in the mountains. And they, they're, they're then reveling in the fact that, you know what, we are laying, like they end up staying in the bedroom of the brothers. And they're like laying in the bed of the brothers. And one of the girls, Dorcas, she says, have you all ever thought about the fact that we're, we're laying in one of their beds? And, and, that was and, all and that line, all she's saying is we're laying in their beds. And it was a chance for us to see their scandalized reactions to someone admitting the fact that they liked the guys and they missed the guys and they were having sexual attraction to them. And it was just the lightest it little was calling point. each other out. Calling each other but, out. But it but, was, but 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 it, but in that just just to your point in that small that little moment, bit of exchange, you, you learn so you much about each of them. Exactly. Yeah. You exactly. can see all their personalities because you could just see, <laughs> and they were doing subtle acting like with the eyes. Totally. And um, oh, and the other thing that's so good about the actors in this movie is that they had to shoot this movie twice, which. You know, because at the time you had the CinemaScope and then you have, I guess, whatever the normal framing was, but you couldn't shoot them together. Mm -hmm. So like all the, you know, scenes, they would have to do them in one way and then the other way, which just knowing that they were able to nail that acting, you know, because we've never seen them side by side, but I'm sure there's slight differences. Yeah. But the fact that they were able to nail that subtlety of the, you know, behind the eyes. It would be nice to look at both. There's a there's a yeah. DVD that was from 2004 where you got to see both versions, the CinemaScope and the flat screen aspect ratio one. I I, I actually would like to see both just to kind of <laughs> see what the difference is. Yeah, because I think part of it was like not being able to have as many characters on screen. Mm -hmm. So this is like, in some cases, it's probably like totally different choreography for some of the dances. Yeah, that would be interesting. That would be interesting to see. And that scene, Janiah, that you were talking about when you're talking about the characters and seeing their personality. Alice, another comedic <laughs> scene. I don't. She says, "Oh, she's hunting eggs. I would love I to love hunt eggs." Because egg. she like, cut the eggs in the barn. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because the eggs are in the barn. The eggs are in the barn, and Millie goes to the barn to get eggs. And Alice, instead of just saying, "I want to go to the barn," she says. I would love to hunt eggs. It's just like, <laughs> what? <laughs> now she is, that, that's the preacher's daughter. 
and she is in La La Land in most of the movie. But uh, I just, it's so funny. And then funny. with the, I mean, yeah, that even when when they responded to the Dorcas, when you said, "Have you ever thought that we're laying in one of their beds?" <laughs> I, I also think that because Brittany brought this up when we were Br- Brittany and I were talking about the movie, and somebody look up the um. I'm gonna start having my computer up during these things like y'all got, but the uh, the, le- the the person who played um, Dorcas, Julie uh, Newmar, Julie Newmar, that was very close to how Julie Newmar is. Yeah, so they, like like because like, if you see her interviews later on, like she is that, and I, I think it was also very progressive of the movie to be able to have a woman who's into her sexuality like that. Yep. But, and at the same time, you can see the other ones, like even the one who, who called her and was like, Dorcas Galen. But you can see behind her eyes, she was like, yeah, we are definitely in one of her bands right now. And I was just thinking about that, but we're not supposed to admit it out loud. They did all of that just with her eyes. Yeah, you know? it was very well done. It was very well done. And the girls, they even start fighting, kind of like wrestling in their underwear. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of this that was like, I mean, now their underwear, of course, is a full outfit. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, it's nothing and to I'm show corset, it, but a clavicle. Them corsets. Right. But, but uh, you, look at, you look at Dorcas in that corset, her, her waist looks the same size as her neck. Right. They, all, they must use the a truck to pull them things tight. Man, <laughs> and they were dancing with them things on. I mean, mm. how do you breathe? It is just, it was, anyway, so I think, I think, I think what we're saying here is this was a good movie. This was a good movie. I, uh, I if would you recommend haven't seen it, it. Yeah, I would recommend it to anybody. If you're a person that's like, I like action movies, I like comedies, I like dramas, I think anyone would like this movie. I think anybody could like this movie. Mm-hmm. And I think that the other thing is, is that there were our family to, Benefit or curse or whatever you would, which however anybody wants to psychoanalyze it, we watched a lot of television. And a lot of television that and we watched a lot of movies together, you know, it was it was a big part of us growing up. And we always watched, you know, good whole, quote unquote wholesome TV. But some of a lot of the TV skewed in certain directions. Like this would be something that my mom would like more or Janai or, or whoever, you know, be, be, things skewed in certain directions. But uh, Several Brothers for Several Brothers was one of the movies I feel like we all enjoyed eating. Totally. I, totally. I feel like everybody loved it the same that mom, all of us, I agree. We, all, we all enjoyed it the same. And we all enjoyed it the same every time we watched it, which was normally around the holiday times that we that we would break it out. But yeah, if you haven't seen it, I would definitely recommend it. And all of this on a movie that MGM had relegated to a relatively low budget and back lot shooting, you know, because they were spending a lot more budget and a lot more time and effort on other movies like Rosemary, Brigadoon, Jupiter's Darling at the exact same time that they thought would, would, would resonate more than Seven Brass for Seven Brothers. And they were wrong. All the way. They were wrong because Seven Brides for Seven Brothers is so good. It got so many nominations to Best Picture, Oscar nomination, just all of these nominations for awards. You know, it's on many kind of like 10 best lists and things like that. It's just, it's just, it truly is a classic. It's if truly we were, a classic. If we were kids, your nickname would be Google. I would just call you Google. <laughs> Brittany, is there any other thing, any other, because I said my last point, Janai said her last point. Did you have a last point you wanted to? Um, well, my last point is something that you hate that I do. <laughs> do <laughs> it, is, sis. Be you. Be you. Which is look deeper into the movie, because that's just how I watch movies. I always look for subcontext. And I think that this is a movie that is um like don't don't go into certain things with expectations um and i think millie she had which is fine she had a whole 
think about how she would be married. I'm cooking for my man, what it's going to look like. Da, 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 da. That was her expectation, but it wasn't what exactly happened, but she still rose to the occasion. Mm-hmm. And so I just think about just those parts of just that part of the movie, just not just being working with what you have and being content in that moment. So just, just those different subcontexts in there. But I mean, but yeah, I think we really, everything else in the movie. Why, why, why would I not like what you just said? I'm just curious. Because you said you don't like when I be like getting. No, no, no. Topics. Listen, we, we could get all the way into the movie. What I'm saying is, if we're going from Adam singing Bless Your Beautiful Eye and going all the way to social uh, 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 online dating apps, I'm just saying uh, that's a. I- well, bless, bless, you, bless, for bless, your, bless your beautiful height, bro, because you know what? <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. You don't want to take the theme. <laughs> Bring him in the current day. Well, that's fine. And I want and, you to know I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> and can I tell you, it's going to be hard when we get look, to the next, the, to our the, next, let me, our next let me, let me couple just, of things let me, we're going to do. Let me be very clear it's about what I'm, what, what I'm saying. I'm not, I like talking about concepts. What about were, extrapolating? What about extrapolating? <laughs> <laughs> I also like finishing my sentences. Also difficult. <laughs> but I, but I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not gonna go too far. All I'm, I'm not gonna get into other topics. All I'm saying is, is this movie wasn't saying that swiping through women is a good thing. So us, talking about how that is, you know. But the movie wasn't saying it, but Adam's perspective was that. It does embody Adam's perspective. It was this perspective of one character. It was not the takeaway of the movie, but it was Adam's perspective. He was swiping through them. He literally was walking around, looking at them and deciding whether they were a candidate. Well, well, whoever said he was the original swiper, that was funny. But I, <laughs> I can't remember which one else said that. that was but uh, whoever said that, that was I, funny. I and said I, that, but listen, that I feel that like y'all is, know what I'm talking about. Well, yeah, you know? yeah, but it's not. It wasn't. It wasn't about. I get what you're. I agree with you, bro. I but I like both. I like both. I like being able to take a piece and go deep on that piece. But yeah, I also I like being it. able to take a larger takeaway that the movie actually intended for us to take away and to talk about that too. I like both. Which I like which is. Both. Which is fine, like you know, and I also the this little bit of a, a the the chase between men and women, that type of thing, you know, that stuff. And is I, yeah, cute I, to I, me. And, and, and I like, know, those, I like, I like when they do it. I like when they do it real, real like they did it, because mm-hmm. it's like Millie is as strong as a person as you can be, you know. But um, at the same time, you know, when she seen Adam. There's a certain he initial it. reaction. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Fell in love. That doesn't derail her being. Exactly. But you can still show these little realities yeah. that we have in between each other. Yeah. And just having... showing. Yeah. Just showing that it's not. And also that people can change. Yes. Right. The Ponopies, they tried so hard. Yeah. And oh it wasn't gosh. until in the words of Gideon, he was an innocent balliger. <laughs> <laughs> until what? they were like, you know he ain't done nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know <laughs> what? I have, so, I, have like, to, I just appreciate that. To wrap us up, y'all, I have to read for you only because I took the time to do it. Okay. I watched the trailer. And I literally paused it repeatedly to write down the language that was on this four minute trailer uh, where they just had little yellow words popping up. It was so long. I'm like, what (laughs) were you doing with trailers back in 1950? But I felt like I was on the Oregon Trail. I was like, is this trailer over? Uh, But I just wanted to read it because to me, it's just like so tells you about how this movie was marketed at the time. MGM merrily presents the exciting new look in musical comedy. 
the hilariously and delightfully shocking romance of seven eager brides and their seven mountain Romeos. Recapturing the robo robust mirth and toe-tapping music of pioneer America and the most enjoyable musical entertainment since Showboat. All singing, dancing cast from Hollywood and Broadway. Jane Powell, the girl with the golden voice, teaching and teaching apostrophe, teaching manners and romance to Oregon's fighting redheads. Howard Keel, giant leader of the mountain's lusty clan. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful show to see in Cinemascope. MGM's love making musical with the magic aliveness of stereophonic sound. <laughs> love making musical. I, know. Hello. I just had to share that. I was trying not to because we're, we're clearly finished with our conversation, but I just had to share that because it's like you know, they, I'm, I'm, they I'm were calling the girls, they were calling the girls eager brides, right? They're calling them mountain Romeos. They're like, um, ca they called them fighting redheads. You know, which is and I, I remember mommy telling us how it was scandalous for them to be in their long underwear on the screen <laughs> like this. This was risque back in the day. And they call them lusty. They call them a lusty clan, you know, and I think it's a little problematic that they they make them redheads and then they call them lusty and fighting. And it's almost you like you're what? dissing the Irish. Like you're like, you're a little bit of like, I get it. you got a little bit of propaganda yeah. in there. So in the way that they mm -hmm. called the women eager when uh, the truth is, look, they were, this was happening to them and they got over it, but there's just, it's just so interesting. But, I just but you know what though? That. It makes me think of that part when they're at, breakfast and they've washed up finally after eons of stinking <laughs> and um benjamin is sitting towards the front of the table and his towel falls and he puts it back on it makes me wonder was that on purpose because they that was more like the lustiness of the movie i don't i wonder if that was on purpose i like, let your towel fall a little bit show, show a little bit of your shoulder you lusty redhead it, come on me this is like yeah. Caleb walking in in his towel, you can see all his legs. Like, now that I think about it, I'm like, I was yeah. doing that on purpose. Exactly. <laughs> Doesn't that make you really think about this movie? Just to hear the way that they framed it. Yes. So anyway, hilarious. I think it's time for the roll call about who's going to give this movie their wagon <sighs> wheel. Bro, will you give this movie your wagon wheel? I wish I had another wagon wheel. I wish I had four. <laughs> yes, obviously. The movie gets my wagon wheel. I would also give it four wagon wheels if I had four. It gets my wagon wheel. The only, the only thing I'm sad about is there was no sequel because I just am really curious to see how it worked out. I'm sure they built a whole bunch of cabins. You know they had that cabin. I know they had at least seven cabins. Because that was, is what Millie said. She was like, I had a store of dreams in them. All the children running around. <laughs> I was like, Millie, wait. <laughs> I think it happened. I think it happened for them. And I also wondered how they continued to apply the alphabet, right? Because Millie's yeah. baby, so the brothers were A, B, A through G. Then Millie's first baby was H. If one of the other couples has a baby before Millie has another baby, did they pick up with I? Oh. Yeah. Or do they start over with A? Good question. See, that we don't know. We don't know how the how the how the letters played out. So that's to MGM. MGM, get on it. Okay. Uh, all right. Bro and sis. This Brittany didn't give was fun. Quote. Yes, she did. Did you give your wagon wheel? I sis, did. Sis, do you give this movie your wagon wheel? Uh no. yes, I did. <laughs> well, the the I, the, I the boats are in. Did. The votes are in. This movie gets all the available wagon wheels, plus some that were not available. And shout out to our mother, Veronica Wright, who tried to be on this podcast because she loves this and takes full credit for our obsession, which she does deserve. She completely Absolutely. gets the credit. Absolutely. 1,000%. 1,000%. But Always. we just didn't feel she was podcast ready. I felt like she <laughs> might have been full. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I felt like she ready. might not have understood the kind of audience we were trying to reach, which is people that really want to have an efficient conversation. 
And so <laughs> we were like, mom, because just even talking about the podcast, she went from talking about, um, so about showing us seven brides for seven brothers to talking about having birth. And she was talking about within a minute, she went from seven brides and seven brothers to whether she had a C-section or not. Stay focused, mom. Right. Stay focused. So, <laughs> now, bro, that's the kind of extrapolating we don't need. So anyway. That's a, that's a different, mean, different kind of extrapolating. <laughs> It's a different kind of extrapolating. Do y'all have any closing thoughts before we wrap? No. That's are, are it. We, are we going to talk about what's next? Oh, yeah. You announce yeah. it, bro. All right. So my sisters, neither one of them, for some reason, have seen The Wire, which I don't know how that's possible. But, <laughs> but, neither, but <laughs> neither one of them have I seen I wish y'all could have seen his face when he just said that. He was so full of judgment. Yes, judgment, <laughs> judgment, and disgust. <laughs> so much judgment. I meant to watch it. I've been well, let, well, well, let me tell you, The Wire was the first show I ever binge watched, and it was um, The Wire. This was for binge watching was a term. Sure. But it was on HBO, and they had all I think it was thirteen episodes for the first season, and I watched all thirteen of those episodes mm, wow until body failure and uh yeah i didn't even stop to eat i ate afterwards there was no yeah. uber eats back then Whoa. but i'm just saying it was, it's it's crazy it's a it's a really really good show so i'm and we're going to do that in several parts obviously because it's, it's got five, five seasons. seasons so we'll do one per season one one show per season so that's what we're going to do next and we're also going to drum roll please we're going to do them. <laughs> Thank you. That was really good. We're going to do them live. We're going to do first them. all five. Oh, not all five. No, no, Just no, the no, next I, one. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Okay. So you we're gotta gonna do watch our sister. She's very extreme. I didn't. I just. I my notes are. You said what? It has ten seasons. <laughs> oh, we can do that in one episode. It's absolutely <laughs> going to happen. Brittany, did you unplug your mic? I can still hear her. If you can't okay. hear her, bro. Okay. You sound no, no, fine. No, no, no. I hear her, but she's she's it, yeah. The audio she changed. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's because we're done. We're done at this point. But the yep. the show will be on. I did my the, bad. It's going to be the live stream on July Sunday, July 19th at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So get ready. This is going to be on video, true live stream, and we'll post the information on all of our social media platforms about how to connect with us live, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday, July 19th. Can't wait. Looking forward to it. Okay. Bye, everybody. Thank you for listening. It's going to be so good next time. Thank you. All right, everybody. Bye. 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 If you didn't ask, if you didn't do it, I was never asking again. (laughs) No. I was never asking again. I did forget. I did forget. Bye. But you did it. You did it. I followed the Bobby's bandwagon. I got on Britney's wagon wheel. Doesn't matter. I'm happy. (laughs) I'm happy and you took me out of my depression because I wasn't going to ask again. Oh. Thanks for Thank listening, you, everybody. I, I do it. I can't remember.